Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number five from the 2023 AP Calculus BC exam. This is just kind of like a, I don't know, miscellaneous type of problem. Let's take a look. Uh, the graphs of the functions f and g are shown in the figure uh, between zero and three. It is known that g of x is 12 over three plus x, which drives me crazy. 12 over x plus three looks better uh, for x greater than or equal to zero. The twice differentiable function f, which is not explicitly given, satisfies f of three is two and the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx is 10. Find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the graphs of f and g. So the first thing we got to do is, I don't know, I mean, it defi they definitely intersect at 3, right? But we could check that by plugging 3 into g. So g of 3 is 12 over 6, which is 2. f of 3 is also 2. So they definitely intersect at 0 and at 3. I don't know if I need to worry about that. Probably not. We're going to do the integral from 0 to 3 of top takeaway bottom. So 0 to 3. Top curve is f of x minus the bottom curve, which is g of x. I actually kind of like this problem. They found like a clever way to ask you to do things. Uh, we're going to break this up into two different integrals, 0 to 3 of f of x dx, and then minus the integral from 0 to 3 of uh, g of x, which is 12 over 3 plus x dx. I prefer x plus 3, but I went with it. Um, if you look at the problem, they say that the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx is 10. So we already know that this is 10. And then it's going to be minus. We have to integrate this. This is just a, a straight up natural log. You could do a u substitution. You don't really need to. So I'm just going to do 12 natural log absolute value of 3 plus x. Don't forget your absolute values there. Uh, and then we're going from 0 to 3. It doesn't really hurt you in this case to forget them, but don't forget them anyway. You always need them. Uh, so we're going to have to use the fundamental theorem on this. 10 minus quantity plugging in 3 gives us 12 natural log of 6 minus plugging in 0 gives us 12 natural log of 3. You should leave this. So you shouldn't really do anything more than this. Um, but I am kind of obsessed with doing more than this. So what I would do, factor a 12 out of everything with a natural log, and then you get natural log of 6 minus natural log of 3, which is the natural log of 6 over 3, or the natural log of 2. So you could leave the unsimplified one. You definitely should. If you simplify it, you will get this. Let's look at the next part. Evaluate the improper integral from 0 to infinity of g of x squared dx, or show that the integral diverges. So let's just write it down. So 0 to infinity g of x squared dx is going to be. So we have to change that upper bound to uh, like some kind of, uh, I don't know, a parameter or a dummy variable. I'm going to use b because it's the upper bound and take the limit as b approaches infinity. The notation really matters. Like you have to nail the notation on this because the rest of the problem, not really that hard. Get your notation right. Um, so if we square g of x, we get 144. And then I finally switched it, the quantity x plus 3 squared dx. Um, and now we're just doing a normal integral. And then at the end, we'll have to take a limit. So I'm going to pull out the 144 and rewrite it as um, 0 to b the quantity x plus 3 to the negative second dx. Then it's going to be plus 1 times the reciprocal. So we'll get uh, the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 144 because the reciprocal of negative 1 is um, negative 1. And then uh, we have x plus 3 to the negative first, and I rewrote it as 1 over x plus 3. We're still going from 0 to b. So now we will have the limit as b approaches infinity we sub in b, negative 144 over b plus 3, minus negative 144 over just 3, because when we sub in 0, uh, that's a constant, so it's not impacted by the limit as b approaches infinity. If b approaches infinity, negative 144 over basically infinity goes to 0. We are just left with 144 over 3, which of course is the answer that we should leave, but of course I'm going to simplify it, and I got 48. All right, let's look at the last part of this thing. Let h be the function defined by h of x is x times f prime of x. Find the value of the integral from 0 to 3, h of x dx. This, to me, looks exactly like integration by parts. Let's start off by writing it. So we're doing the integral of x times f prime of x. I'm going to pick a u and a dv. I don't know how to um, deal with f double prime, so dv has to be f prime which makes u equal x. Generally, you want to pick u so that the derivatives eventually would go to 0. So also, that makes sense. Uh, du is just going to be dx. And v is just going to be f of x. 
And so it's uv, so x, f of x. And now this is a definite integral, so we have to go from 0 to 3. Then minus the integral of v du, so f of x dx. Uh, so the integral, uh, well, let's do the fundamental theorem on x, f of x, right? So it's going to be 3, f of 3 minus 0, thankfully, because we don't know what f of 0 is, really, I think. Maybe we do from that graph, but I don't remember what the graph looks like. Um, so 3f of 3 minus 0f of 0 minus, we were given um, the integral from 0 to 3 is 10. So we're using that value again. They made good use of that. Uh, all right, so now we just need to know what f of 3 is. Uh, f of 3 is given. It's 2. So it's 3 times 2. And then 0 and minus 10. So 6 minus 10, negative 4. That's the entire question. I hope this was helpful and good luck.